this project was a key one. Uh, as we were sort of doing that initial uh, white paper, uh, there was a, a stack of questions around uh, around how we, you know, practically what what are some of the considerations around actually implementing AI solutions in a mining company? Things to be to be uh, worked on. And so this this uh, project is sort of set about trying to help provide some guidance around that. So um, Emma, would you uh, be able to give us a give us an update as to where things are at and how you how you're going with this one? Yeah, definitely. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I think so. Maybe okay. I can. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take it as a yes then. All right, so um, just as a brief overview, our aim with this guideline, with the implementations of AI and mining project is to leverage some of the lessons learned and use case study examples from people's experience with applying AI and mining to develop and implement an, a guideline and develop a framework for the industry so that organizations can develop a strong business and technological foundation for scalable and successful AI applications. So we've spent a lot of time determining the context and the key sections and priorities for the document and trying to understand what the reader should be getting out of this document because there really is a lot to cover with building a guideline for implementing AI alone, but also making sure that that it's applicable in a mining environment and that all the unique challenges that come along with that are included. So this is boiled down to three main guideline sections. Um, so those are the business foundation section, which provides guidance and considerations on how to approach an AI project from a business perspective. Uh, the technical foundations, which provides guidance on the technical considerations for implementing and maintaining AI projects. And then lastly, education and ethics. And obviously trust comes up continuously with AI as well as ethical use of AI. So this is a section uh, we'll focus on later, I believe. And now we're in the content generation phase. So we have a really awesome group of volunteers who are in the process of actually generating content, writing, uh, building, fleshing out the document over the next couple of weeks. And as you all know, and are probably familiar with GMG's iterative peer review process, we really need your eyes on this document and we'll need your feedback and expertise as the document progresses. Because like I said, there's a lot to cover with implementing AI, but tailoring that message and making sure that we're providing resources and case studies that are relatable to the mining industry and that address those unique experiences and challenges of implementing AI in that environment is really important to me and to you as well, I'm sure. Uh, and of course, the document's available on Basecamp. So if you have reviewed it and you'd like to contribute, please let someone from GMG know because we have a lot of volunteers, but we are still looking for more. We have a lot to cover. So your help is very appreciated. Uh, and that is about it. We're working hard on generating content and building out our document. And as our volunteers contribute more and build the guideline out more, we'll need your feedback very shortly. Brilliant, Emma. Thank you. Um, and look, somebody just uh, did drop a comment in the, um, in the chat section around, can, is it too late to contribute? No, it's not too late. Definitely um, <clears throat> with both of these projects, we'd be absolutely keen. It, as Emma said, it is an iterative pro process and um, uh, it just really does rely on people bringing some, some of their expertise to, to, to the picture. Um, it is, I often feel it's a bit like um, uh, maybe uh, building a bit of a puzzle. We sort of start out, you know, just slowly forming up a, a bit of a, a skeleton to things and then, and then dropping in the pieces of content and then refining it and building it out and occasionally adding and, and doing more with it. And then finally, we sort of, you know, craft it out. So it's a, it's a very uh, polished uh, document to go out. But that middle messy bit is really the key bit where we need your help. And, um, and I've been a part of a number of these projects where even just contributing a, a couple of paragraphs of stuff that you, uh, you know and you've experienced and you have some expertise in, uh, just even a few paragraphs or a section uh, or even just suggesting things that people that we sh should be thinking about and addressing um, that, that's all really useful it's never too late because the process is quite iterative and we we, we, we revisit what we've got regularly as part of these uh, sessions that get together to kind of work our way through that so um, so I guess um, definitely put your hand up uh, if you want to get involved there. So definitely room for that. Uh, Emma, I, I'd ask you the same question, uh, actually, as I asked Rob, because I think 
uh, I'm curious, uh, had slightly less to do with this one in some ways. Um, but what's been good and what's been sort of challenging around, um, around this, this particular effort for you guys? I think what's been challenging is kind of just what you had mentioned, that middle messy bit that we have a lot of really good expertise and a lot of really great volunteers and figuring out what the context is and what should be in the guideline is it's kind of the easy part. And then just getting the ball rolling, getting those first few sections in is probably the hardest part because we've just entered the content generation phase. So now that we're really starting to dig into the document and address some of the questions that I imagine, like someone coming to this document, those specific answers they're looking for, trying to make that message clear has been challenging. Um, but the good part has been, obviously, we have so much subject matter expertise and we've built like a really great structure, I think. And I think as we as we keep going, things will become easier. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, and there's definitely a journey to these documents. Uh, I know with the original, the first document we put together, it kind of, it sort of snowballed as we went. And there was one key workshop in Montreal where we really collected a lot of good content. It was you know, it was a bit, a bit of a, a, just a shovel load of stuff into different buckets of headings and whatnot. It went through a lot of work after that, but, um, but then, it, then, then it really sort of found its flow and I guess we started to clean it up so that it, it turned out to be a really useful document that we've used in our organization to um, pass on to senior management and others who don't know anything about what AI is all about and its possibilities. And, you know, and that's really what we do is produce really useful, um, uh, useful, useful, um, materials like that. Um, the audience for, for your piece, uh, Emma, I, I know that was always a little bit of a discussion point as to who, who exactly we're targeting um, this document at. And are you able to sort of unpack that for us a little bit? Yeah, I think we've tried to address it with splitting it out into the technical and business foundation section. So whether you're maybe a manager or a program manager, you're more on the business end, answering some of those more ethical issues uh, should be in that section. So maybe you're not directly involved with implementing the AI system itself. It should provide a resource to people in almost every role that is gonna have some hand in AI. So whether, honestly, even from the education and ethics section at the end of the document, if you are someone who has just experienced AI at your company, I hope that this document can provide a resource for you as well. And as well, if you're directly like working, building these AI systems, whether you're a machine learning engineer or whether you're on the business end as a manager or a project leader. I think that the audience is really broad, but I also think that the teams involved in pulling these things off are broad as well. So I think you kind of need to have kind of like a holistic view of who's gonna be involved in this. And it's, it's broad, I guess, if I haven't said that already. Cool, cool. Uh, any questions for Emma, guys? Um, hi, hi, Emma. So this is Rahul. Uh, I'm founder at Core AI, and uh, we are based out of Halifax, Canada, and we are building um, sort of AI solutions for exploration and extraction mining, very relevant to what document or the project you are working on. Um, I see uh, there are in in the current challenges or needs. You said there are, there's a need of volunteers to fill out uh, different sections. Um, especially technical business and education. Uh, I think it would be great if uh, if there is a subgroup. Uh, I do not know if it is on the base camp or somewhere, uh, but uh, a subgroup wherein all the all the all the volunteers which are which have raised their hands in the previous session uh, to work on a particular section, if they can come together. Um, so yeah, that is something <clears throat> I was looking at uh, since the last session. But if there is a, a subgroup. Um, within the project uh, wherein people can come together and brainstorm beyond the meetings which, such as this which has a wider audience uh, it would be great yeah definitely and there will be so thanks for mentioning that so if you aren't already if you don't already have your name on the guideline you can message someone from gmg and they'll get you in those so we'll have, have a subgroup for the business section the technical foundation section as well as the ethics and education sections and those groups will be meeting yeah, group. absolutely. That would be that would be great. A subgroup, I think it would be uh, much more uh, organized and you'll get the results also pretty quickly. For sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.